I'm sure I'm going to get ripped to shreds for this, but I'm so lost and I don't know where else to turn. I, 28 female, have been with my boyfriend 30 for three years. Cheated on him a few times throughout the relationship. Just sexual, no feelings or emotional connections. I love my boyfriend more than anything, but I guess I just felt like there was something missing. I really couldn't tell you what compelled me to act this way. I confided in a friend who has kept my secrets for a long time, no problem. But yesterday my friends told my boyfriend everything, and now my boyfriend hates me. I left our house to give him space, but I can only stay away for a few days before I have to go back. I guess I'm looking for advice because I don't know what's wrong with me. How could I cheat on someone who has done nothing but love and support me through some really tough times? Why wasn't that enough for me? What can I do to keep myself from hurting another person like this? Edit. I know I have no one to blame but myself, but for this situation, he's completely innocent of ever doing anything but love me. But that doesn't mean it's not hard for me to lose this relationship as well. I know what I did was horrible, but I was still holding out hope that he would never find out, and we would maybe buy a house and get married, and that our relationship could be enough. What if I can never find someone that fulfills all my needs? I'm beginning to get scared that everyone settles for someone who ticks off most of their boxes but just doesn't admit it. I've never really considered an open relationship, and I don't necessarily think it's for me. But maybe it's worth exploring down the road, I don't know. I just need to work on myself and make myself better for the people around me. Comments End the relationship and go to therapy to figure out why you did this. Your boyfriend is very unlikely to forgive you, nor would anyone who cares about him give him the advice to do so. Not only did you cheat on him repeatedly, you didn't even respect him enough to tell him yourself. There's no coming back from that. You cheated out of selfishness, pure and simple. Therapy can possibly help you develop some empathy and consideration for other people so that you can have a healthy, faithful relationship. But you should absolutely not start dating again until you unpack this behavior and take full responsibility for your actions. I know this is five months old at this point, but I laughed when I read this. You love him, but you've cheated on him multiple times? Sorry, but I can't see how you can love someone, yet intentionally do arguably the one thing that will destroy most exclusive relationships and any love and trust your boyfriend had for you. Also, neglecting the fact that you could have given your boyfriend STDs from the other dudes you slept with, the lack of awareness is amazing to me. You're asking this seriously? As if you have no mind of your own? As if you have zero control over your actions? There it is. You're not owning your actions. You're not taking responsibility for your choices. It just happens. No, it doesn't. Each time you get with someone else, you're making the choice to do so. Until you begin to take some personal responsibility, it's not likely you'll get far. Story 2 I met my 22 female boyfriend 25 in high school. We dated for a while when I was 15 or 16, but he wasn't nice to me and we didn't have a good relationship. Breaking up with me often but saying I couldn't be with anyone else. Often making fun of me, saying he was only with me as a placeholder, etc. After a year of on-off dating, we broke up for good until I was 19. I was in a bad place mentally. I don't know what triggered it. I've always been a good kid, but when I was 19, something snapped. And I started doing drugs, having one-night stands, drinking very heavily, physically hurting myself often. And as part of my bad decision-making, I contacted him again to hang out. He had done a complete 180. I can't stress enough how supportive and wonderful he was to, at this point, almost a stranger. A very mentally unhealthy stranger. With his unending help and support, I don't know how or why, but I was mature and responsible and mentally healthy after a couple months. We started dating. We've been living together pretty much since we started dating again. It's been wonderful. Things were going really well until December 2019 when my dad died in an accident. Everyone thought I was handling the situation really well. I was going into overdrive taking care of my mom and little brother. I never took off work or school. I had finals the same day as his funeral and still took care of things at home. 
my screw-ups, all within a month span in March 2020. 1. For the first few months after my dad died, I felt no emotion except for anger and a devastation I've never felt before. My only concern was for my mom, brother, uncle, and grandpa. I told my boyfriend I didn't know if we were going to make it through this. I had nothing left to give to him emotionally after driving two hours round trip every day to take care of my family, while I was working full time and going to school. I told him we should probably break up for his own good. If we were ever going to break up, now would be the time when I didn't feel anything. We didn't break up because he said he was going to be there for me no matter what. And the only way we were going to break up is if it was because I personally wanted to break up. And I didn't. When the pandemic hit hard in my area in March, I started working at a Walmart. I made a friend, Jay, 23 male. He became a really close friend really quickly since we were always assigned shifts together. We always had lunch in my car. With money tight and the pandemic, hiking was the only activity where I wasn't actively thinking about my dad. I hated being at home during this time. My boyfriend hates hiking and refused to come with me. I don't like hiking alone and don't know anyone else who enjoys hiking, so I went hiking with Jay. I was always clear about my friendship with Jay and asked my boyfriend to tell me if he was ever uncomfortable. I liked talking to Jay because he seemed to understand what I was going through with my dad. My boyfriend always got really uncomfortable and upset when I needed to talk about it. Just stop thinking about it. My boyfriend wasn't mean about it, it's just not what I needed to hear. Around this time, Jay told me he had feelings for me. Without hesitation, I told him, sorry, we can't be friends anymore. Unfriended him on Facebook and sent the screenshots to my boyfriend to just let him know the situation. Then I texted my friend, Jay has been there for me, my boyfriend hasn't. I don't know. Should I be with Jay? I feel effing gross thinking about that now. I immediately texted her again that I don't know what I was thinking. Obviously not. I didn't have feelings for Jay. I think I just truly enjoyed the attention. Which isn't okay. This is a screw up because of that text. I don't know if this is emotional cheating. I feel sick when I think about it. A week after I unfriended him and we no longer work together, he messaged me that he was sorry to be asking me this, but he had no other friends to ask, which is true. He had gotten into a car accident and needed a ride to work in the mornings. With my boyfriend's permission, I would get up at 4 a.m. and give him a ride to work in the mornings, but nothing else. At this point, I really knew there were zero feelings. 3. The Big Screw-Up My only other supportive friend during this time was S, 25 female. S is a lesbian, which I didn't think had any impact on a relationship. The J thing really fried my brain. She asked if I wanted to come over and talk about it. I hadn't drank at all since my mental breakdown. I'm not sure what else to call it in 2016-2017. But I drank. About three hours into drinking to the point where I couldn't stand, she was talking about how nobody would ever be attracted to her. I kissed her. We kissed for around 30 seconds when I pushed her away and ran outside crying. I went home. I blacked out. I have zero memory after running out of her house. I got home to my sleeping boyfriend and according to him, I woke him up sobbing uncontrollably, told him he needed to break up with me because I cheated on him, and sobbed myself to sleep in the hallway while screaming I was so effing sorry. What my boyfriend did the next day is why I can't emphasize enough that he's the most compassionate kind soul I think I may ever meet. He knew I was giving rides to Jay in the mornings and knew I definitely wasn't going to be sober or conscious to give Jay a ride. So a few hours after I came home an effing mess, he messaged Jay to tell him he would be giving him a ride that morning. He got up at 4am like I normally did and gave Jay a ride to work. When I sobered up from the worst hangover I have ever had the next day, I blocked S and told Jay I'm sorry, but he needs to find a new ride and blocked him. My boyfriend wasn't mad at me, I told him that whatever I said when I was messed up, I still meant. I told him he had to break up with me. I could never forgive myself for kissing S. He said he honestly would if it weren't for the fact that this is the only real emotion I had showed since my dad died. He said I reminded him that month of the me from when I contacted him again when I was 19. Ever since the day after I kissed S, 
Our relationship has 100% gone back to normal. It's like I snapped out of something. I'm able to process feelings again. It's been almost a year since March 2020, and we're talking about getting married. But I still feel like I'll ruin his life if he stays with me. It feels like a waste that this amazing person is with someone who would do that to him, both emotionally cheat and physically kiss someone else. It will clearly never happen again. It honestly makes me physically ill thinking about it. He says he really doesn't think about it and it doesn't impact our relationship. I can't shake off the guilt. I don't know. Advice? Opinions? Comments. Get some therapy, yo. I'm very sorry for your loss, but don't let it and grief be an accelerant to using substances in order to cope. While drink and grief isn't an excuse to cheat, J and S are shitty people who just look to take advantage of you while you may not have been all there. You could always do more to make yourself feel like you're making it. Breakfast surprises, tell him to have a good day. If you're feeling like he can do better, that's because you feel like you're not putting as much as he is in the relationship. Just be the best you can be is all you can do.